Hey everyone, welcome back to the PlayStation Exhibit Hall. We are live here. I'm Meredith Molinari. I'm here with Richard and Ricky, creators Hello. of Hohoken. Hi, how you doing? I'm good, so thank you for being with us. Now, I have to say, first, what strikes me about this game is the visual quality of it. The colors are so vibrant and bright. Talk to me about some of the inspiration behind creating this uh, visual style of the game. Uh, I don't know, I love color. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's weirdly, like, color's not a thing that I'm naturally good at. Like, when I first started as an artist, I was, everything was black and white, and I had to sort of teach myself how to do good stuff with color, just from like observing stuff in real life. And I still kind of do that. I walk down the street and I see like, I don't know, a shop sign, and I think, those colors work really well. So then I might use it in the game or something. Yeah, um, so that answer specifically about color, but color is like really important in our game. It's a colorful game. Absolutely, and the yeah, other yeah. thing that I think I was reading is really important to you guys was to create an atmosphere that was, you know, maybe not the norm of you know, video game standards where it's like, you're gonna do this and then you're gonna go here and complete this level and get this reward. It has a little more relaxed feel. Can you tell Absolutely. us about that? Absolutely, that's a really like core value for us. It's wanting to make a game where you don't feel pressure and you don't feel, you, you don't experience constant failure and you can just relax and chill out and enjoy it. Like quite often when I play games, I like to kind of find a way, like maybe I've killed all the people in a bit of a, of a shooter, and then I just like to wander around looking at all the cool stuff. Yeah. And and I like I want to make a game, or we want to make a game that's that kind of feels like that, you know, that has that not not that you've killed a load of guys, but 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 but, but you, you've got this the time and the space to just enjoy being in the place and not worry about like the clock ticking down or how many lives you've got left or 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 some puzzle that's really like doing your head in. Like we have puzzles, but the, it's more just about discovering cool things like pleasant surprises. That, that if you if you just like mess around and try things out and you're inquisitive, then you'll probably solve the puzzles. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, so many games feel like just kind of a list of tasks that, that you're constantly being asked to do. And in, and in this game, we we don't want players to feel like the game's constantly asking them to do things. We want people to just enjoy being in the place. I mean, w what you are in this game is is quite a kind of tactile, expressive creature, and it should it should feel fun just to just to be in the space and move around. Yeah, yeah and it definitely has kind of like a playground quality to it where, yeah. like you said, you're not, you know, oh, you have to beat this level to get to this bad guy to go on to the next thing. You kind of just get to be in an open world. And, and you know, I think you even made a point of causing mischief sometimes. Yeah. You're not always, you know, doing the right thing. Yeah. yeah. This level here has a kind of thing going where, where people are flying kites. And that actually comes out of us describing what you are as a bit like flying a kite. So the feeling of, we wanted to make a game where the way you move around the world feels a bit like you're doing a cool thing like flying a kite. Uh, and so it's almost got a creative, sort of ex expressive quality, quality to the way you just move around. Now, yeah. just so the viewers at home are, are with us on this, this is on the PS4 currently right now, what it we is. are seeing. Yeah. It's also going to be available on the PS3 yep. and on the PlayStation Vita. Yes, it is, yeah. Wonderful. So it's all, all three consoles. That's really great. Okay, so is there a narrative plot that kind of drives the character throughout the whole story? There's not a, I wouldn't say there's a really strong story, like the kind of thing you are, you're quite a, an, you're this sort of strange thing that's kind of alien you're to the world outsider. that you're, mov you're moving in and you don't speak the language of anybody and you don't, and you, you come into these different places and in one place, like, yeah, as Ricky said, one place you might be mischievous and in another place you might be helpful to the people who live here, there like you are here. And, um, and, and yeah, it's, for us it's more to do with creating a kind of convincing and cohesive world. And there is a kind of a story, um, and it's kind of about finding your place in that world, but I don't want to talk about it all too right, much beyond there. We don't want to yeah. give away all the surprises. Yeah. Talk to me a little about the music, because the music in it is really beautiful. Is the it a score that was written specifically for the game? Kind of, the music's really exciting. So we're, we're doing a collaboration with the record label Ghostly, who've got yeah, quite a lot of artists whose work we really love and who like even before, like way back when we were just making this as a prototype and it was like in the IGF, before we were involved with Sony at all, uh, we had a kind of like a, a playlist of, of like music that was kind of inspirational, the sort of music we, we thought would work for the game and, and, it, and it had artists on it who were ghostly artists. And then, and then when we started working with Sony Santa Monica, they, they, they've got an amazing sort of music and audio department. They've got really great guys there. And they were like, yeah, we can try and actually get these guys to make the music. And we've ended up with that, that record label doing, yeah, so their awesome. artists doing all the music. And I don't know if you've heard the music in the trailer. So that's the first bit of music from that record label. Wonderful. Yeah, and it's, um, yeah, I think it's a, because it's a mass, because it's this kind of chilled out yeah. thing where you're, you're immersing yourself in this thing and you're playing around. I think having 
awesome music to accompany that is, is, is really important. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You touched a little bit on the subject of joining up with Sony Santa Monica. And now, as an indie developer, was there a certain level of nervousness going into that relationship? Were you really excited? How did you guys get together, and, and did that relationship help flourish the game? I, I well, we, we knew that we knew they worked really well. Like we already have massive respect for a lot of the games that they'd made at the time we started talking to them. So, like we already knew that we were pretty much talking to the right people. Um, and the early conversations were just they were they were just so supportive of the kind of thing we were trying to make. You know, we're trying to make quite a strange thing that's you know, uh, and, and and we really didn't want the people we make the game with to, to try and break that. We wanted you know we wanted people to the, the partner we, we we worked with to be true to the spirit of what we're trying to make. Yeah. And and, and and at no point did we ever feel like yeah they're going to try and change this and turn it into something right. more video gamey. Like yeah. In fact, it's the opposite. Sometimes we've had ideas for things which are quite kind of. Um, which are moving away from it being such a kind of, I don't know how you describe it, RT, I hate the term RT, but you know what I mean. And they've, they've, almost caught, they've almost said no, you know, they really want to protect that vision. And you can see what they've done with, like, you know, the That Game Company games and, uh, and games like, you know, like Detour and Linger in, Linger in Shadows, uh, you know, and the, you know, the Giant Sparrow game. Yeah. You know, they've finished one. Unfinished ones. Unfinished ones. Yeah. They've, yeah, they've set their stall out for supporting, supporting kind of interesting, creative visions with, with games. And so I reckon they're the perfect people. I think if you asked most indies, they'd, they'd, they'd be well into it, I think, yeah. That's great. And, and I think it's what's really inspiring probably to other indie developers is seeing how well a game like this, which is very different than any of their games that are out there, is actually being supported by, by such a big name like Sony Santa Monica Studio. And it, yeah. it makes probably the other indie developers be a little less nervous moving forward. Now, uh, you talked a little about the fact that this is also going to be available on PS Vita, and we were talking about Frobisher Says, how that was like so involved with all the different Vita features. Yeah, um, yeah. So are we going to be able to use like touch screens? And yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but you've been playing around. I don't think there's anything happening. On, is there stuff happening yeah, in the Vita? Yeah, there's, there's, some, there's some touch okay, screen so stuff, there is, but there'll, yeah. be, there'll be a ton more. Yeah. The nice thing about Hohokam is because, it, you, you know, there's no way in Hohokam that you can cheat. It's not like it's not like you can gain some kind of unfair benefit by using the touch screen as well. So it's totally fine to let players like interact with things by touching them instead of say flying past them or bumping into them. It works yeah. really well. Like if you can you go down like, like these like uh, there's stuff that happens like this kind of this kind of it, it's just stuff reacting to you. Yeah. And maybe that stuff could react to your finger on the rear touch instead yeah. of I don't know. Yeah. It just has a beautiful, like, simplistic, vibrant quality to it. In a lot of ways, it reminds me of, of that, you know, sound shapes, where that has a very relaxed but immersive feel to the world. You know, where you just get a playground to kind of move around it. And it seems like you even have more freedom in this game to really play around and just kind of discover what's around you. Yeah. All right, so any word on a release date? No, we're going to, it's going to come out? What are we saying? 2014. 2014? Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us no, and giving you. us a closer really look nice. at Broken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to take a look at a trailer right now. Okay, cheers.